This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Glorified Ministries. Thank you for another opportunity to come and to teach and preach a message centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. We, we preach and teach the kingdom. That is a directive of the Lord. Anybody who's followed this ministry know that we preach the kingdom according to uh, Matthew 24, 14, that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all nations for witness before that the end can come. And so that's what we do. The, the kingdom of God is advanced, amen, because we know that the Lord is king of kings. He's, he's Lord of lords. And in this earth realm, he has to be received. Jesus has to be accepted as Lord and Savior. And when that happens, the Lord is able to completely change our lives. And then from us, amen, from us, that that lordship of Jesus can touch others. Amen. And so that's what we're preaching, the kingdom of God. Um, y'all who were with us last week, y'all know that we, we talked about God's image for the church. We said that we are made in the image of God. And that we showed you through the scriptures that that image is actually Jesus Christ. And so the church is made in the image of God, which is Jesus Christ. It is that image which is fruitful. It is that image which is productive. In other words, when the church, the body of Christ is submitted unto the lordship, the headship of Jesus. Amen. And, and working with the Lord, submitted unto the Lord, that it produces fruitfulness in this earth realm. Amen. The Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is the image of light and righteousness. Amen. Uh, rightness, purity, holiness. That's the image of heaven. And the Lord wants that in this earth realm. As the, the kingdom of God is advanced by the lordship of Jesus, there is fruitfulness in this earth. Amen. There is holiness. There is righteousness. There is peace. There is healing. There is salvation. There is strength. Amen. All those things come as the church lines up with the will of God. Amen. And so today we want to expand on that a little bit. Um, tonight we are teaching on the keys of fruitfulness. God has called man to be fruitful and to multiply. And that comes out of the image of Christ when we operate out of that image, amen, as we are joined unto the Lord. And so the um, we're going to look at some keys, some keys to being fruitful in the kingdom of God. Amen. And we want to start with Mark chapter 4, beginning with verse 26. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 28. And he, Jesus, said, the kingdom of God is as a man should scatter seed on the ground, and he should sleep by night and rise by day. And the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Amen. And so he says the kingdom of God, Jesus is giving a parable. He's teaching about the kingdom of God. That's what God has called me to do, me and my wife, to preach and teach the kingdom of God, how it operates. The Lord spoke to me. He says, just like uh, an automobile mechanic knows how a, a vehicle operates. He says, I'm going to teach you how the kingdom of God operates and to teach it into my, into my people. So Jesus gives some keys right here of how the kingdom of God operates. Amen. And it, it is speaking toward fruitfulness. It is speaking toward harvest. Amen. He says that the kingdom of God is as a person would scatter seed. So planting seed, scattering seed. And the person that plants the seed, they simply go to sleep at night and they rise during the day. But they themselves, they don't know how that seed comes forth. And that seed does come forth in stages. Amen. It says, 
for the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and then the full grain in the head. Amen. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts the sickle because the harvest has come. God is a God of harvest. He's called the Lord of harvest. Amen. And God is a God who requires harvest. He requires fruitfulness. In this earth, we are required to bring forth harvest. Jesus says the fields are already white, white unto harvest. Amen. He says that, but the laborers are few. Amen. Those that know how to labor. And I'm going to show you that God has called us to labor with him. So the earth, he says, brings forth the harvest of itself. In other words, built into the process. Amen. The harvest will come forth. Amen. The Bible says when we praise the Lord, we cause the earth to yield its increase. God has put, put resources in his earth. Amen. For the kingdom of God or to fund the kingdom of God. Amen. The Bible says it is God who's given us power to get wealth, to establish his covenant in this earth realm so that he can save souls, so that he can deliver souls. And so the resources of the kingdom is to bring forth harvest. Harvest is harvest of souls and harvest of righteousness. Righteousness is what God intended from the beginning when there was no sickness, no disease. And when man was in fellowship with God, uninterrupted, unbroken fellowship with the Lord, and that there was um, no lack in the Garden of Eden. Amen. There was no lack in the beginning. What God intended for man is called righteousness. Amen. And it is of him. Righteousness is of God. Amen. So fruitfulness is of God. That is the, one of the keys to the kingdom. Jesus told Peter, he says, behold, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In other words, binding and loosing is connected to the wheel of heaven or the image of heaven. Amen. What heaven wants, what God wants, what heaven shows, amen. Binding on earth is in accordance to what heaven would bind. And loosing on earth is in accordance to what heaven wants loosed, amen. And we know that the heaven wants righteousness loosed upon this earth realm, amen. That the, the he wants, the Lord wants yokes to be destroyed, for burdens to be removed, amen, for righteousness to reign, amen, and it flows from heaven, amen, the image which is of heaven, but the very, the main key, I believe, to this parable is found in verse, it says, verse 27, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. The key to fruitfulness is found in that statement that the one that scattered the seed doesn't know how it grows. Amen. The one who scattered the seed does not know how it comes forth. Amen. Amen. Yeah, just stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you where that is. The, the, the person who plants the seed is dependent upon God to do his part. So seed time and harvest, it is a joint venture between God and man. Amen. Seed time and harvest is a joint venture. Amen. Every farmer has a measure of faith. They have to believe God for the rain and for the sun, amen, and for the conditions to be right. Not only that, they just um, uh, uh, wait for the crop to come first. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, amen. So it, it comes in stages of maturity. And that person who plants the seed is dependent upon God. It is a relationship. Amen. And that person 
who plants the seed has this idea. I trust God. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, is, it is an act of humility, amen, to admit that you don't know, amen. You know, I, I'm a minister of the gospel. My wife is a minister of the gospel. And, and these messages come from the Lord. And the ability to preach comes from the Lord. Amen. I had no ability of myself, amen, to preach or, or to come up with message, to be taught of the Lord. The Lord himself has taught me and my wife. Amen. And so there is a dependence upon the Lord if I am going to be fruitful in the venture Amen. The calling, the purpose that God has called me to be. Amen. I am dependent upon God for his part. And then my job is to give the Lord his fruit. Amen. God is looking for fruit. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So it is God's earth. It is his fruit. It is God's harvest. Amen. He allows us to participate in the harvest. And he gives us good seed. The word of God is good seed. Amen. So whether you're talking about your faith as you plant seed, whether it's talking about finances or whether it's talking about sowing the word, the Bible says the sower sows the word in this same chapter it talks about how the sower sows the word. Amen. To bring forth the harvest. Amen. And so we are in this earth realm. we are called by God to do a work, but we cannot do our own work. The Bible says, unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain. And unless the Lord watch over the city, the watchman watches in vain. To watch means to watch and pray. That we don't even know how to pray as we ought. Amen. And that every house is built by someone, the Bible says, but the one who builds everything is the Lord. So the key to fruitfulness is to give glory to God, to acknowledge God is the one who brings fruitfulness. And when we bring forth that harvest by doing our part, by sowing, by trusting God, by believing God, amen, then all glory goes to God. The Bible says we, we have this treasure in earthen vessels, amen, so that the excellency of the glory may be of him and not of ourselves. So one of the main keys, amen, to being fruitful in the Lord is dependence upon God and an attitude that you yourself cannot do it without the Lord, amen. The farmer cannot bring forth in harvest, a harvest without the Lord. So he does not worry about the part that God does. He simply trusts God and he does his part. Amen. And when that harvest comes forth, the Bible says immediately the sickle comes and, 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 and brings in the harvest. Amen. Because it is God's harvest. He's looking for maturity. He's looking for fruit. Amen. And when you are joined unto the Lord. Amen. I'm going to show you that. When you are one with the Lord, in covenant with the Lord to bring forth his harvest, immediately you give the Lord his harvest and you give the Lord his glory. So one of the main keys to being fruitful in the kingdom of God is that that farmer, the one who scattered his seed, how that harvest, how that plant comes up, he does not know. Amen. People say, well, you know, there's, you know, sun and rain and photosynthesis. I'm not talking about that. Now you're trying to know too much. Amen. That the one that causes the harvest to come forth is God. As we are co-laborers with the Lord, we are one with him in covenant with him to, to work the fields. Amen. To plant the seed so that when the, his harvest comes forth, we give the Lord his, his harvest. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, the apostle Paul says, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. So this is the apostle Paul. He says that I made it my goal, my plan, I determined, I purpose not to know anything except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we know that the apostle Paul was fruitful. Amen. 
that that the the two thirds of the New Testament, Amen, or the epistles were attributed to Paul, Amen, and that he did a work, Amen, which is still here, which is still producing those seeds, Holy Ghost, that the Apostle Paul planted are still producing today. Amen. He was fruitful. And yet his testimony was, I don't know anything. He says that he says in that that all the things that he knew, he counted them as dung. Everything of his former life, his former education. Amen. Everything of his status and his prestige, he counted them as dung, as nothing. Amen. That he may know Christ in the excellency of his glory, amen, that he may know him and the power of his resurrection, amen. So the key to being fruitful is that the knowledge that you need, everything that you need to be fruitful comes from God. You cannot do it of your own. You cannot do it apart from the Lord. You cannot do it separated from the Lord. And it is that that purity of being connected to the Lord that will always bring forth a harvest unto God. The Bible says that God's word, it does not return unto him void, but it prospers in the thing whereunto he sent it. It always brings a harvest. God's good seed always brings a harvest. Amen. And our part is to provide the good heart, the good ground, and to give the Lord the glory and to allow the, the force of righteousness, the, 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 the force of the anointing, amen, the force of grace, amen, to bring forth that which belongs to God. It belongs to God is what I'm trying to say, amen. And so let's look at Luke chapter 22. And uh, we're going to just lay a little foundation and get as far as we can. Amen. We, we, we add upon the things that, that we teach layers and layers. Amen. To, to build a foundation for the house of God. Amen. To be built according to the right pattern. The, the pattern of the Lord comes from heaven. That's the right pattern. Everything that God ever had man to build, the pattern would come from heaven. Whether it was the, the ark, amen, in the days of Noah, whether it was the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness or the temple of, of Solomon, amen, the pattern, amen, would come from the Lord, from that perfect realm, heaven, into this earth realm. And we would have to adhere. The, 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 the Bible says, to Moses, see to it, take heed that you make everything according to the pattern that I showed you upon the mount. Amen. And so we will see that the that, that image, amen, of the church is Jesus. So any pattern of building and any type of planting, the, the center part of it would, would be Jesus. Amen. That's how you get success. Amen. That Bible says that if the, the first fruit is holy, then the lump is also holy. The Bible says that if the root is holy, so are the branches. Jesus is the first fruit of those raised from the dead. Amen. We are a pattern of the Lord and we are supposed to adhere to that pattern because we are made in the image of God. So in Luke chapter 22, and we'll look at verse 35. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And he, Jesus said to them, when I sent you out without money bag, knapsack and sandals, did you lack anything? So they said nothing, Lord. When I sent you out with nothing, amen. Did you lack anything? They said, no, we didn't like anything, Lord. Amen. And so what is the Bible saying? Jesus sent his disciples out without money, knapsack, and anything like that. And they didn't like anything. They were prosperous. They were fruitful. They were successful. But the reason that they were successful is not found in them. It is found in Jesus. Amen. They were in partnership with Jesus, connected to Jesus. But they were also submitted unto Jesus. Any missing part of that, and it would not work. Amen. 
They were in agreement with the Lord to do the works of God, the same works that Jesus was doing. They did those same works. They healed the sick. They, they raised the dead. They cast out devils. They opened blind eyes. They cleansed the leper. These are the works of God. Amen. They were successful and they were full. They did not lack anything. God provided, supplied all their needs. Amen. But the key was that they were connected to Jesus and submitted unto Jesus. They partnered with the Lord in his work. It's like Jesus said, even when he was 12 years old, uh, when he was missing from the company of people that had traveled with his mother and others, that they, they had lost track of him. But, and they had to double back and go back into town. And they, fought, they found him in the temple that, that he was reasoning with the, the lawyers and the scribes and the Pharisees who marveled at the 12-year-old Jesus' understanding of the scriptures. Jesus says, know you not that I must be about my father's business. So even at 12, Jesus had the understanding that it is God's business. We are a part of God's business. Our life is unto the Lord. Amen. Our life is unto God. It is, it is his calling that he's working in us. Amen. So they did not lack anything because they were in partnership with Jesus. Amen. And that they were submitted unto Jesus. Amen. So now we're going to go back into Genesis Um most of the time that I preach, I, I reference Genesis just about every time I preach. Amen. Because you have to go back to the beginnings. When God started everything, amen, he, he showed man and told man what he expected out of him. Amen. And so if you want to understand how things work, you have to go back to the beginning. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So the image of God is oneness as he bring them in, amen, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one, yet they are unique, yet they are one in purpose, amen. And so God made man in his own image. He created them, amen, to be a partaker of his image, to, to fit in him, amen. God created man to fit in that image, amen where that two or more operate as one, amen. Two or more operate as one. And so that's the image of God. And there's an element of submission, amen. Man, man would be able to do what God told him to do as long as he was one with God and submitted unto God. And says, verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. So God's instructions, his first instructions to man who are who is one man and woman, but it is them, amen, to be fruitful and to multiply, to fill the earth and subdue it, to have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Amen. And so God's instructions to man, number one, he's giving him instructions. Man would have to be submitted to God, God's authority, God's word. God is speaking his word. As long as man would um, obey God's word, he would, get, he would get the fruit that comes from God's word. And so he, he tells them, that's the image of God, where more than one operate as one with an element of submission to authority. Amen. So that's the image of God. Amen. To be fruitful, to multiply, 
to fill the earth, to subdue it, to have dominion of the fish of the sea, of the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. Amen. He says, to fill the earth and subdue it. Amen. The word subdue is kabosh. You know, you heard somebody say, put the kabosh. Amen. It means to tread over. Amen. So man was supposed to keep this earth in line. Okay. Heaven is already divinely ordered. Okay. I want you to see the purposes of God. So he makes man in his image and he commands man to keep this earth divinely ordered. Amen. By being submitted unto him, God, and not rebelling against his authority. The weight of God's authority would put the kibosh on anything that creeped, anything that moved, anything that tried to get out of order. That, that, that man would subdue it. He would put the kibosh on it. He would tread upon it. The Bible says, behold, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. Amen. That is the desire of the Lord. Amen. We, we are supposed to operate by his authority, connected to him to be fruitful. Amen. And to walk in dominion and authority. Amen. And God says, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth. And every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be food. So God gives seed to maintain that, that state of fruitfulness. I want you to see that. So the next thing that God gives, he gives man seed, amen, to maintain that state of fruitfulness. He says also it to every beast of the earth and every bird of the air and everything that creeps on the earth in which there's life. I've given every green herb for food and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made. Indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So everything God made was good. That means it was right. It was righteous. You could not add to it. It was perfect. If he had executed his plan of righteousness when he made everything, no sickness, no disease. You see, it was righteous. It was right. Man was to maintain that state of rightness and righteousness with God's authority, the ability. Amen. Remember that, that, that when the, the sower scattered seed, amen, his, his heart was that he is dependent upon God for the rest. Amen. And so we are to be dependent upon God to, for God to do his part. We have to do our part to be in partnership with the Lord, to be a co-laborer with the Lord. Let us continue in Genesis in chapter 2, verse 4. It says, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. Amen. So I want you to see this that it had not rained yet because there was not a man to till the ground. That with God, you must enter into covenant with God. Amen. You must say, I do. Amen. You must enter into covenant with the Lord. You must take God up on his plan, his agreement. Amen. And so that is what I call the covenant of rain. God had not caused it to rain. Because he had not found a man to take him up on that offer. He had created Adam and Eve, but he had not taken him up on that offer to be in covenant and trust the Lord for rain. Amen. That the rain, the, the significance of rain is the direction that rain comes from. Rain comes from above. It causes man to look to God. Amen. That if you are in agreement, covenant with the Lord to, to, to plant, amen, for the Lord, to bring forth a harvest, 
Amen. You must trust the Lord for the rain. Amen. To cause the seed to come into fruition. Amen. And so that, that's why in the days of Noah, the earth was destroyed by rain because it was a, now it is a judgment against the wickedness of man. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit would not strive with man always because there was violence and wickedness upon this earth. Amen. And the thoughts of man were continually wickedness at all times. They had made no place for God. They had only made a place for wickedness. God's fruit is righteousness. And the earth was producing wickedness. Amen. And we see the Bible says the Holy Spirit would not strive. In other words, it was to contend or to, to judge for man. Amen. Because if the, the Holy Spirit judged, man would be wiped out. And so that's what we saw. Man was wiped out except for Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And so it was a covenant of rain. Man rejected the rain. Amen. So they had not even heard that there was such a thing as rain until the flood washed them away. It was a judgment which showed the rejection of God. Amen. And bringing forth that which is wicked. God is a God who wants the harvest. The, the good harvest. Amen. Not a harvest of wickedness. Amen. He wants a harvest of righteousness. Amen. And so God is a God of covenant. The greatest and highest form of covenant is to be one with. Amen. Just like in marriage. We are one with the Lord. Of every form of covenant, that is the greatest and the highest form of covenant that there is, is to be literally to be in agreement to be one with. Amen. So we're supposed to be one with God, joined unto the Lord. The Bible says they that are joined unto the Lord are one spirit. Amen. In other words, God's heart. Those that are joined unto the Lord are in agreement by the power of the Holy Spirit. The fruitfulness of God will come by the work of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Our uh, fruitfulness, our ability to produce is given unto us by the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, it is more expedient for you that I go away. And if I go away, I will send, the Father will send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so our ability to produce is to be joined with the Lord. And the way that we are joined unto the Lord is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the more of this Holy Spirit that we have in our lives, the more the flesh is cut away. That is the covenant that the, the Holy Spirit receiving the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even that with the evidence of speaking in tongues shows that we are children of God. It is a sign, the Bible says, that those that speak by the Spirit, it is a sign, amen. And that sign is a sign of covenant, that we belong to God, that we are different from the rest of the people of the earth. Now, of course, we have to bring forth fruits of the Spirit, amen. And so we're not denying that. I'm just saying God designed it for the Holy Spirit to be that one to cut off the flesh in your life. Amen. That the Lord is, that, that is jealous, the Bible says. The spirit that dwells in you yearns jealously. And so if the Holy Spirit is that prominent a part of your life, that he, he, he yields, he, he, he broods over you. Amen. And you yield to him as, as he begins to take over aspects of your life as you yield to him. You must yield to him for him to take over. He will cut off sin. He will cut off the works of the flesh. That is the covenant showing that you are uh, children of God, that you belong to God. So the greatest and highest form of covenant is to be one. We are called to be one with the Lord. Amen. Let's continue in Genesis and see where man missed it. In Genesis chapter three, 
beginning with verse 1. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. That's the devil. And he said to the woman, so he's, he's speaking out of order that Adam was head over Eve, that, that Adam is over Eve, even submitted unto Adam, even though they are one. That, that was what I call the Godhead model, that God the Father is head over Jesus. Jesus would say that God is greater than me. God is greater than all. Why are you calling me great? What was he saying? Was he saying that he was not God? No, he was not saying that he was not great. He was not saying that he was not God. He was, he was deferring to the Father God. He was giving reverence to the Father God, which 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says that the God the Father is the head of Jesus. So even though the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and humbled himself in the form of a servant. And he humbled himself unto death upon the cross. In other words, he yielded unto the Father to do the will of God to save us. And then it says, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. In other words, that the, the place of the second Adam, the lordship over the earth, God gave it to Jesus. He is the rightful heir. And anything that comes against that is antichrist. Amen. And so the Bible says that heaven belongs to God, but the earth he gave to the sons of men. So Jesus immediately gave it unto man when he resurrected. He says, all that the Father has given me, I have given unto you. But the way for us to rule and reign in life is through one Christ Jesus. We cannot reign over this earth Apart from Jesus being Lord and head of the church, we have to be one with that and not strive against it and not rebel against it. If we are one with him, we'll get the fruit of Jesus being Lord. The, the very works of God, we will be able to work. You said that's a big statement. Jesus said the same thing, the works that I do, you shall do also in greater works because I go to the Father. So the works of God, remember what are the works of God? God made everything perfect and then rested. Six days of working, perfect. Then God rested, which was signifying that those works were good. And he sanctified the seventh day and called it holy. Amen. And so for us to enter into that rest or that Sabbath, then we would have to cease from our own labor. We would have to do the works of God by being connected to the Lord, giving him honor and glory. God would confirm the word when we operate by faith. The Bible says God would confirm the word with signs following. In other words, showing that those works that we were working are his same good works. Amen. God made everything good. When the devil comes and, 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 and plant tares, and when the devil comes and tries to corrupt, amen, we have authority as long as that authority is connected to the headship, the lordship of Jesus. And we are authorized, deputized to do the works of God, which really are the same works that God already did. Jesus did the same thing. When he ministered upon this earth, he healed the sick and raised the dead. He cast out devils. He made everything back right. He brought things into divine order. Those who operated by faith were able to receive the good works. And so Jesus did the works of God. And so when Jesus went to heaven, he sent, God sent the Holy Spirit so that we can do the works of God to be witnesses. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses. Witnesses of what? That Jesus is raised from the dead. If Jesus is raised from the dead, then we have the authority and the ability as long as we are yielded unto him, one with him, to do those same works because we are not rebelling against God. God will confirm that those are his works, amen, by manifesting his glory. Because we are giving him the glory. 
And the Lord is able to manifest that those are his works. And he's able to make right the things that are wrong. That some people, they, 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 they feel funny. They, 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 they even come against, many people come against people believing God to make things right. And yet that's why Jesus was manifested. The Bible says, for this cause was Jesus manifested to destroy the works of the devil. And the devil works in a lot of areas that he tries to keep people from being saved. The Bible says, whom the God of this world has blinded, lest the light of the glorious gospel would shine unto them. He, he tries to keep people in sickness and disease. He brings corruption. He tries to pervert that which is good. He tries to pervert even the word of God. Amen. Our job is to remove the wicked works of the devil. We can only do it by the authority and the anointing attached to the Lord. So we have to work with the Lord. Amen. We have to do it, but we have to do it by faith and we have to give him the glory. We have to receive his anointing, his power, his grace. Amen. So the serpent was cunning, more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you, shall, you will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the temptation is that he's presenting to Eve is that you must know good and evil to be like God. So he's tempting her that he's saying that, okay, God truly knows everything. There's a part that, that, that God has not given unto you. Amen. That is the knowledge of good and evil. And what that, what that actually meant is this, that for every good, the devil would be allowed, permitted to present the dark side, the evil side. That's what that, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that's what that meant. That man, if, if he ate from that tree, he would allow sin into the world. He would allow the devil to demonstrate that there is an evil side. That's the side the devil says that God is keeping from you. Amen. And so it says, verse six, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, in other words, she had a lust or a desire for it, that what the devil offered, she um, took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covered. Okay, so what is happening? Why, why are we going back to Genesis? I want to show you why things were in the earth, why we need Jesus, why we have to receive the word the way that God said to receive the word. Amen. That we cannot be freelancers. Amen. We have to be submitted unto the Lord. Amen. To be fruitful unto God. That, you know, a lot of people, they want stuff for themselves to consume it upon their own lust. But if you study the word of God, your fruitfulness is unto God. Amen. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things would be added unto you. Amen. And so the devil said, if you want to be like God, you need to know evil. He says you need to know it. You need to experience it. But God said that I made you in my image and you would have to trust in God to be fruitful. You would have to have faith in the love of God, the integrity of God, the integrity of God's word. You would have to trust God. Amen. To be fruitful. Amen. So the devil says you need to know. Let's go back to our original scripture that the seed the kingdom of God is as a man scatters seed and it comes up how he doesn't know. Amen. But it does come up in stages. Amen. 
the blade, the ear, and the full grain in the ear. It comes up. Amen. And when it is fully um, um, complete, amen, when it is mature fruit, the sickle goes and it brings in the harvest. Amen. Because God is always looking for that mature harvest. As soon as it is complete, as soon as it is mature, you have to work with God. There's an element that you don't know. That element is trusting God. That element is trusting the love of God. Amen. I'm not saying you don't know the word of God. God teaches you his way. He teaches you his word. I'm talking about an attitude. Amen. That there is a part that, that, that for fruitfulness to come forth that comes from the Lord and that you will have to trust the Lord to do his part. You cannot try to take over. You cannot be separated from the Lord. Amen. Let's look at it again. I'm, I'm just laying a foundation and I know <laughs> that I won't get to the full message, but that's okay. And first, first Kings chapter three, hallelujah. First Kings chapter three, beginning with verse three, it says <clears throat> verse three, beginning with verse three and Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father, David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now, the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, you have shown great mercy to your servant, David, my father, because he walked before you in truth, in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you. You have continued this great kindness for him and you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father, David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in and your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give your, your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. So he says, give me an understanding heart, wisdom, so that I can discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked for long life for yourself, nor have asked for riches for yourself, nor have asked for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I've done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall there any arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so there shall not be anyone like you among all the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, walk, then I will lengthen your days. Amen. So, let me just summarize, you know, that King Solomon had a dream. In the dream, God says, what do you want? <laughs> ask me, whatever, whatever you ask me. And he says, I need wisdom. I need wisdom to go in be, and, and before your people, go in and out before your people. He says that I don't know how. He says, I'm a, I'm a child. I don't know how. Amen. I, I want you to see the heart of fruitfulness. Solomon was the wisest king. Amen. And he was a fruitful king, but his confession was to the Lord, I need you. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it. Amen. I don't know how, Lord. Amen. The Bible says the speech pleased the Lord. Amen. Because he was thinking of God's people instead of himself. He was a true shepherd, amen, like his father David was a shepherd, to, to have that the, the heart, amen, of the good shepherd, to care for the people. 
to want wisdom to discern between good and evil. Amen. He says because he, he asked for wisdom, he gave him everything else also. But the, the key in this verse is that he says, because me, myself, that I'm poor in spirit. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit. You know, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Poor in spirit means that you are void without the Lord. You're empty without the Lord. You need him to do what he's called you to do. Amen. You need the Lord. And it is that connection. God says, okay, I can work with that. I want you to see what God is saying. He says, I can work with that. Amen. That humble heart. I can work with that. Amen. That you allow me to live big through you. And in you, you allow me to live in you. Amen. To bring forth fruit. Amen. So fruit comes from being connected to God. Amen. Just like that Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches. Amen. Every branch in him brings forth much fruit. The Bible says, St. John chapter 15. Amen. Fruitfulness comes from being connected to the Lord and giving him the glory and giving him that place. Hey, to work. Amen. In your life, to work in your life, to bring forth a harvest which is his harvest, amen. That harvest belongs to God, amen. Let's continue. We, we can do a couple more perhaps in Matthew. In Matthew chapter 11. Beginning with verse 25. Matthew chapter 11, verse 25, it says, <clears throat> at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and to the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Y'all know I've preached from this passage several times is about being joined unto Jesus to do the work of God. The yoke I've taught you is the Holy Spirit. The, the yoke, the reason that the Holy Spirit is seen as a yoke, that it would be despised by some. You must be willing to take that yoke to actually be joined unto Jesus. He is the ox of strength to do the work of the Lord. Oxen represent work, doing the work of of the Lord. But I want to go above that. He says, I thank you, Father, that you've hidden these things from the wise and prudent, those that are wise in their own eyes, and that those that are prudent in their own eyes, and that you reveal them unto babes. And so fruitfulness, amen. It will take humility to, to, to humble yourself as a child to receive the things of God. Amen. Somebody says, you know, who, how do you, um, how did your ministry come forth? <laughs> Amen. Well, well, where were you trained? How do you do these things? I humbled myself when the Lord called me and my wife. We humbled ourselves unto God. Amen. The Lord took us by what he called the way of the wilderness to purge the world out of us and to purge mammon out of us. Amen. So that our reliance and our dependence would only be upon the Lord. Amen. He called us as apostles. Some of you might not know that. Why do I say that this is Apostle Calvin Brown? And why do I refer to my wife as Apostle Vivian Brown? Because God called us that. Amen. So that's who we are. There's fruitfulness in our apostleship because we are submitted unto God and connected unto the Lord. Amen. There is anointing and grace uh, on this ministry because we are connected to the Lord and submitted unto the Lord and humbled ourselves before the Lord. We don't know anything except what the Lord teaches us. Amen. We purpose not to know anything. Amen. 
that, that we were empty of anything except that which the Lord taught us and gave us. Amen. But I want to go a little bit above that. It says in verse 22, it says, but I say to you, it would be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in that day of judgment than you and you Capernaum who are exalted to heaven will be brought down to hell or Hades for the, if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, they would remain until this day. But I say unto you that it would be more tolerable in the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. He says, if the mighty works, I will show you hopefully in future teachings, the works that Jesus did were the works of the father and that those works that they, they spoke that Jesus was one with the father. Amen. The way that Jesus did those mighty works was being one with the father. And so when people rejected Jesus, and they rejected his anointing and they rejected those mighty works. They were rejecting the fact that he was one with his father, that the works themselves would speak that these are God's works. In other words, God will signify which works are his. Amen. God is working. God is in this earth realm. God is working. God is planting and, and harvesting. God is building. And we are part of what God is doing. God will signify that those who are one with him, called by him, submitted unto him, that those are his works. God will confirm those works. Amen. And the word with signs following. Amen. And so Jesus says, after this, he says that these things are hidden to those who think that they are so wise and prudent, that you must humble yourself as a child to receive in the kingdom. Amen. And so that what are we doing tonight? We just started a little bit about teaching about fruitfulness. Amen. The keys to fruitfulness is that there is an element of I don't know. Amen. That it's not that you don't know your wisdom comes from God and it takes humility to, re to receive wisdom from God. You cannot seem like you already know. You, you shut yourself off. God resists the proud, but he gives grace unto the humble. So these, these are keys of fruitfulness, amen, in the kingdom of God. So Father, we thank you for that word. Thank you, Lord God, for that beginning of plowing and plowing and planting, Lord God, amen, so that you, Lord God, would bring forth a harvest unto yourself. I thank you for those, Lord, who are willing to yield unto you, amen, whose hearts, Lord God, are, are softened, amen, to be ground, good ground, with depth of heart, to receive the word, to bring forth that harvest. I thank you, Father, also, you said in your word, when they ask you how to do the works of God is to believe the one whom you have sent. Amen. That Jesus, of course, was sent. And Lord, that you sent me and my wife, that those in this hearing audience must believe that we are sent to do those same works, to receive the word that we are speaking, teaching and preaching and to bring forth fruit. So we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus name. Amen.